Hi and welcome, I'm Tommy Holst and this is the Dropcast Movie Poster Podcast. This format is part of the Instagram blog drop and you can find it under at DropMacOfficial and we do reviews, news, interviews that all have to do with the film business. And today we have another release episode. It's gonna be a really cool one because it features the new format that Bottleneck um, came up with. It is a uh, artist feature uh, thing they do or they want to do like every Friday. I don't know if they're gonna do it like this week as well, but uh, it's a really cool thing. They feature a new artist they have never worked with before and it's a cool thing for the community and it's giving back in a very cool way and there is some really cool stuff in it and um, besides that I have something really cool for you as well. Giving back to the community is what I try to do as well. I'm going to talk about the Matt Griffin Dune print that came out with Bottleneck and we're going to talk to Victoria Casinova who did the the five bloods key art for this new spike lee movie which is a really cool movie and i'm really excited to talk to those artists in the end of the podcast okay to start out with um here's the overview i have of all the art we are going to talk about except of course the two pieces that have an individual look so our first one is going to be this wonderful 2001 a space odyssey stanley Kubrick print it's a bottleneck uh, release and they came up with a one milli one millimeter PET mounted on paper bag version and a four millimeter polystyrene version which uh, was available uh, 300 times for a hundred dollar and 200 times for two hundred dollar sizes are 24 by 36 inches and it's a really cool piece I mean this the this spaceship is like very iconic and the, the, the space station in this term uh, as well. And uh, it's one of the best sci-fi movies ever made. And uh, it captures this really cool moment, this um, way of exploring space, in my opinion. And I really, really, really enjoyed this piece. It's a very, very great one. Uh, sadly, my wallet said no, so I didn't get it. But I hope to see, I think a couple of people already got them. Uh, I saw it on, on the Facebook groups I'm on and I think a couple of people got them. So let me know uh, how this turned out in real life. I wonder uh, how, it, how it feels and what it looks like. And uh, yeah, thanks to Bottleneck who is actually like turning around so fast with all the releases that came out lately. Uh, good job on that guys. Our second one is also a bottleneck release, and this is a uh, um, co-release with Island Prince, uh, which is one of the one of my favorite names. <laughs> and uh, this artist who did this um, is the the print I'm showing is a screen print by a Manger Germain Manger, I think is his name. Uh, Mengir, I don't know how to pronounce it. I think he's French, and he did this beautiful Robin Hood piece and. Robin Hood is one of my favorite Disney movies, so I really enjoyed this one. And there's also, a, a, they didn't call it a variant, but there's this holofoil, uh, rainbow, or, yeah, rainbow foil version of this piece. Looks also really, really cool. Um, the edition of the uh, foil is $165 for $60, and the screen print is $75 for $60. So very cool piece. Um, got all the cool characters in it. it got, got the nice setup with the characters, and gives you also the Friar Tuck Jungle Book vibes if you look at the bottom of this print. Very cool stuff. Our next one is by... Juan Ramos, I think Juan Love. Is this Mr. Juan Love on uh, on Instagram? I think so. And uh, this guy uh, has has my favorite Instagram name. Uh, if if that's you, I hope I didn't get that uh, wrong. But um, yeah, this is a really really cool piece and uh, for the Batman animated series. And I think Bottleneck wanted to do a couple more pieces like this. And um, in the future, I heard something in the grapevine. I'm, I'm I think I can't talk about it yet, but maybe something's going to happen more in the future in terms of Batman animated series and. Um, this one has a black light reactive inks in this on the screen print, so I'm really excited how this is gonna look what like. So people, um, if you have that at home already, send 
pictures in the comments or something like that so i see how the reactive inks work on this beautiful print this is edition of 375 50 dollars a piece and it's 25 by 36 inch so uh yeah batman anime series was very cool it got all the characters in there the good ones the bad ones basically and of course the main character batman and uh this conceptual piece is a very very um good with the colors as well and as, as you have to have to be with a screen print not a lot of colors but it fits in perfectly and i really enjoy this piece okay our next one is going to be a part of the artist series that i talked about and it's the one it's dark city and it's by uh the artist michael rafflaub he's a german uh no, no i'm sorry a swiss uh artist and uh he made this movie i think from 90 eight i think it was and uh, it captures the this feeling of this dark city very well especially in this kind of greenish night vision kind of type uh print it's a 24 by 18 65 hand numbered edition and 45 dollars and there's also a variant of this piece uh, in this kind of uh grayish uh, i'm sorry brownish color and brownish yellow i think i like this one better though than the greenish one I, I think it fits better to the movie but i think the uh, the brownish one is my is more my favorite in this case and there's only 35 of them out there and uh it's 55 dollars on a g-clay print um also in this series is this lovecraftian uh novel it's a book cover so uh they they not feature only movie posters or, some, or something like that they feature art in general and uh, also book covers in this case and um at the mountain of madness it i, I really like the the typo the, the typography of uh the, the 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 lettering here and um the the eyes of this kind of monster and the mountain and all of that and 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 the look of it, it's all very, very cool. There's a variant uh, which is basically black and white with the green eyes. I didn't like that so much, but this one is uh, this one is really fire. I really enjoyed this um, cover of this book, of this Lovecraftian novel, and I think it captures the um, this this kind of uh, vibe that comes along with it very well. And Jay Gordon. Uh, Shout out to you. Very, very nice job. I hope there's going to be some more uh, posters in the future. And uh, yeah, so I want to see how you tackle the movie poster stuff as well. This is a 24 by 36 inch uh, release, hand numbered edition of 100. And it was uh, um, was a co-release with Ishmael ISH. <laughs> The, the toy maker i don't know if, if what what has to do with they had the cyclops laurent durieux release as well with him and um yeah cool piece 50 dollars as i said and um yeah the next one is also in that artist release pack it is by george townley who's a very cool author really enjoyed george townley he does very cool ar architectural stuff and i'm um, really in the need of buying one of his or one is one is maybe too, uh, not enough but more of his architectural work i really enjoy it because i have the wall uh with only architecture stuff so far i want to add on that maybe with some very cool pieces he does especially in the los angeles series um where he picked very cool buildings uh, around los angeles and this one dunder mifflin do i have to say more we all know this building from the office of course it's a 24 by 18 inch um print uh, a g clay print and it's hand numbered edition of 75 and it costs 60 dollars very cool stuff i really uh, enjoy george townlin he's a very cool guy okay our next one is by the guys from mondo they did this very cool the invisible man print uh by frank uh um, Francesco Francavia oh, Villa. I don't know. I hope I pronounce it right. It's a uh, by DL Screen Printing, 24 by 36 inches, and it's an edition of 225. Sadly, this one only shipped in the U.S. and Canada. So if you have a chance, like if getting those by Mondo, they do sometimes some restrictions. Um, you can get around it if you have a poster buddy. Uh, that helps you out with like giving the address and like sending it to you maybe for a little tip maybe just for gratitude and you do them a favor as well if that uh, happens to be the case 
And yeah, this print is very, very cool. I like the the way the the, the invisible hand and this suit you can see in there. And uh, yeah, and the house, very cool house. She was like trapped in. I think that's a very good metaphor in this case. And there's also a variant print, uh, which has the, light, the, the, the lightning in there as well. And the red colors, it's an edition of $175. And this one is also really cool. But I think I have to go with the blue one on this case. I really enjoy this blue one. And um, yeah, very, very cool prints. Um, very enjoyable. Uh, Francesco, he does a very good job on all the stuff he does. All the like the paintings he did lately. He's he's doing so much, so much. So congrats, uh, Francesco. You are very much appreciated when it comes to this beautiful art. The next one, also by Mondo, is a. Uh, uh, artist we already had before it's daniel taylor from hungary i think um and he did this wonderful thor ragnarok piece especially with the colors it fits right into the movie and uh, the color scheme they're going for uh this kind of pinkish uh stuff the, the question is so um i wondered about the concept um Daniel, if you have a chance, I tag you, of course, in the post. And if you read, uh, if you listen to this uh, or watch this, wh wh what is what was your uh, idea behind it? Um, because when you look at it, the the tiny Thor, uh, uh, like in front of here, and the the big hammer, which is like maybe a lot of uh, responsibility that comes with. It, you see the, I think should should it be the rainbow bridge or should it be something that the, the teleportation that uh, Heimdall does? Uh, in this case and um, I, I wondered what this was all about and uh, I would like to know how you came up with this beautiful piece so if you have a chance let us know we could set up a talk and have more for the community out there okay our last pieces as I say I have to say it's multiple pieces is by gray matter art here's a uh, here's like a little uh, screen of all of them together and there are so many different ones and um if you look at this, I'm gonna I'm gonna put that up here in the browser so you can see a little bit better. I'm gonna pull it up a little bit more. This was um, the the concept art series of uh, Grey Matter Art and Marvel uh, for especially for the MCU. They have the original artists like Ryan Minerding who uh, who does a lot of work and Andy Park did a lot of work on on, on the on the concept art for that and they sold out they sold those prints on uh, fine art G clay prints uh, 24 by 12 hand numbered and they are all printed by gray matter printing um, I didn't know that they have a printing company now so that's very interesting and uh, yeah $45 uh, around a piece and the editions are 150 to I think 75 or something like that. So they're getting smaller uh, as well in size. Or uh, is it bigger? I don't remember. No, they're smaller. Yeah, smaller in size. But it's very cool concept art um, that these artists do. Charlie Wen also in there, as you can see. And um, yeah, and you could also buy the whole set. And uh, this is part one of the whole set. A very cool stuff and we're going to take a look at the second release as well um for the cinema uh, cinematic universe this is by andy park the uh, end game one really 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 cool one and uh i really enjoyed this one the captain america civil war for black panther very good because this is uh, like the first time the panther came up and with his outfit and everything very nice stuff and um some of these prints are still available so check in on that um uh, if there's some, I think that the sets are sold out already. And uh, yeah, this Spider-Man print is also very cool. The the, the concept art print, and as I, as I mentioned before, you can also get the set of five for two hundred. Very very cool release stuff. I really enjoyed this one. So this is it. Now we will go over and talk to Matt Griffin first for his Dune piece. And then we are going to talk to Victoria Casinova, as I said before, to for the, the Five Bloods key art. This is going to be very cool. I'm really excited to talk to both artists uh, and have them on our release poster podcast episode. Okay, so now it's time to talk to Matt Griffin, the creator of a wonderful piece uh, that it was released by Bottleneck, which is the Paul piece, which comes through to or is it a part of the book series Dune that he made this art for. Matt, how are you doing, my man? 
I'm good. Thank you, Tom. Nice to be here. Yeah, thanks uh, for coming on the show. It's a real pleasure to uh, feature one of the first artists in this in this new kind of thing bottleneck does with the um artist show they do i think they want to do it every friday or something like that and they release a lot of different pieces and um yeah i'm really excited uh to look at your work in progress on this beautiful piece so uh how how did it all start how did you get in touch with um with bottleneck on this case uh, so i had been in touch with bottleneck already on a couple of other projects mm -hmm. So my first release with them uh, was a few months ago was the Iron Giant. Mm -hmm. uh, but we also have a few others in the pipe. Oh, that's that's good to hear. Oh. I mean, oh, the Iron Giant, I just remember oh, the Iron Giant one was so beautiful. I was like, <laughs> I was so tempted. I didn't have money, though, so I didn't get it. I was like, oh, oh my God. But yeah, it's, it's such a such a wonderful piece. Yeah, thanks. Uh, yeah, glad you like it. So um yeah, I was uh, uh, chatting to Joe uh, and we had a few little uh, projects on the go and a few mm -hmm. little irons in the fire. And uh, w since I made this uh, piece of art uh, called Paul, um, I have had a lot of requests for it as a print from the collecting community. Um, pretty much on a, on a weekly basis, if not a daily basis, I would get an email from someone saying, is this ever going to be a print? Mm -hmm. uh, especially after it came out um, on the special deluxe edition book. Uh, even before that, I would get a lot of requests. But once the book came out, I was getting the requests every day. Uh, so I, I said to Joe, uh, Bottleneck, um, I explained that I get these requests all the time. And would they be interested? And uh, yeah, he said, absolutely. So. Uh, I would have deemed a piece like that uh, unseppable because there are on my Photoshop file, there's about 10,000 layers <laughs> uh, and a million colors. Um, but uh, that's until someone like uh, Matt Ferguson gets a hold of it and he can set basically anything. And uh, he helped me out with that and mm -hmm. it was released and that's it. So uh, the, the, the other art, how, how did this, how, uh, is this going to be as a print version as well at some point or is it just going to be the cover? Just the cover for now. Uh, I, I also do get a few requests for the interior uh, pieces. Mm -hmm. um, I just haven't really explored it yet. Um, but I might down the line, you know, maybe they could be clay or something. Yeah. Uh, uh, it's a possibility, but there's there's not as many mm -hmm. requests for the interior as there is for that cover. Yeah. Everybody wanted it. Yeah, the cover looks really great. And there are two versions that Bottleneck came up with. The uh, first one I'm, I'm showing here is the regular version. And then there is a foil version, which probably looks really awesome in, in person. Did they, did they send them out already? Because like lately they have been like super fast, like in releasing those uh, prints and like shipping them out. Yeah, people have got theirs. So uh, I went on my Facebook group and yeah. uh, asked uh, if anybody's got theirs, please send me photos because I'm, I haven't seen them yet. Uh, I'll get a couple of my APs uh, I'll get for myself, cool. but they haven't arrived. Mm -hmm. And people sent me pics and uh, they looked awesome. They looked really cool. It was printed by the Half and Half, who are mm -hmm. uh, brilliant. And uh, the foil looks looks really great. Yeah. Um, I had actually thought, uh, could it be done on gold foil? Would that be good? And then I was schooled mm -hmm. that uh, gold foil is actually not good for uh, screen printing. Oh, okay. Um, and that the foil will give a kind of a gold effect with those inks on top of it anyway. So. Um, yeah, okay. I can't wait to see it in person. The, the yeah. foil is exciting. Yeah, very nice. And um, the what was your first concept uh, of like how did you go about it, like creating the cover in this case, or because you did probably didn't create the the the, the poster in a different way? Yes. So the piece of art was made a couple of years ago, and uh, I was. Uh, I like to make textures with ink and paper and I sit down and I'll use water and ink and charcoal and whatever I can get my hands on and I'll make these textures which I then scan and I'll use them in various pieces of art like and not just textures but I take weird pictures of random stuff cement mixers stoves all kinds <laughs> okay. of stuff and uh, I use it in my art 
And uh, for this one, I, I decided I want to make an original piece of art because I did this ink wash mm -hmm. and it looked like a kind of a sandstorm. Yeah, it did. I mean, I, I just pulled it up so everybody can see it now. And yeah, it, it okay. looks like All right. it. Well, it's, it's a bit embarrassing, this first piece, because what happened was I sat down and I said, I'm going to draw uh, Paul or Muad'Dib in this sandstorm uh -huh. and it's going to be amazing. And what always happens to me when I sit down to do a really detailed piece of original art, certainly these days, uh, is uh, I have great intentions. And then about 30 seconds into it, I go Aah! and it's uh, <laughs> it's ruined. I don't have any kind of attention span uh, for for making very detailed original art these days. OK, and how, how is it? So, how is it, though, then? I mean, when you when you do it di digitally, is it is it is it different or is it still the attention span? No. not? I, I can't describe it. Okay. It's, it takes no less time. Uh, I'm still drawing digitally. I guess the difference is I can undo a mistake yeah. digitally that I can't undo with ink. Okay. Uh, so there's that. Um, <laughs> I, I think for so many years now, like I used to, obviously I've always drawn uh, with ink and by hand mm. uh, my whole life. But in recent years, because I'm so busy with commercial work, I have to bang it out quickly. Mm -hmm. Um, and I've just become so accustomed to digital that I'm, you know, I'm, I'm losing touch a little bit with the original art. So hence why I thought I'd sit down and do this. But it was, as you could see there from the image, um, uh, I don't know if I can curse, but it was a load of shite. <laughs> and uh, uh, but I really liked this idea of the sandstorm and the ink wash. Uh, I yeah. loved the texture. Yeah. So I did it again, this time with no messy figure in it and uh, kept the concept of this figure standing in the in the wind and sand mm -hmm. and uh, switched to digital and made uh, this piece, which I think you might have as well, which is kind of the original. Yeah, I just put it up. Piece. All right. So I made that and uh, I thought it was OK, pretty cool. And I'll put it online and I might get five likes and I'll move on. <laughs> but it kind of took off. It, uh, <laughs> It got tons and tons and tons of shares and likes yeah. on all sides. Tumblr got thousands and Twitter and Instagram and all these things. So uh, people really loved it. And one of the people who saw it was this art director in Penguin that I've worked with because mm -hmm. I, I do a lot of book cover work. Uh, that's and Is it is it uh, Adam Auerbach? It is Adam Auerbach, yeah. Mm -hmm. And uh, he said, uh, could we license this piece for a uh, cover on Dune and I've loved Dune since I was uh, a kid mm -hmm. um, first the movie and then the book I have to admit okay. but uh, mm -hmm. big Dune fan and I've read read had read the book at this stage multiple times and still do and I love it and I nearly leapt 10 feet off my chair um, I was very excited but I kind of remained calm and said hang on I, I don't want to just do the cover I want to illustrate the whole book mm -hmm. So I said to him, any chance I could do a fully illustrated edition? And he said, no, look, we're not looking to illustrate it, but you could do the end papers and we might make this actually kind of a special edition of the book. Okay, cool. And that's how it was born. So uh, I, it became this deluxe edition and they, I kind of uh, altered the art so it would be a full wrap. Uh, I did this art for the inside of the dust jacket, the end papers, a new map, and that was it. Okay, it came out. So, sounds very good. I mean, it came out very well. And uh, after after you all did all this, and now uh, Bottleneck asked you to do the the the, the print, and uh, there is a lot of stuff involved. I mean, you you gave a uh, in the group. I think in a Facebook group you shared uh, the GIF also, and uh, I have it here, and I just put it in, and people can see what kind of work uh, it takes to have um, or to make a screen print. How yes. how 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 crazy was this? Well, I can take no credit for this whatsoever because this was all Matt Ferguson. Yeah. Uh, he uh, is a huge help to me um, in helping me with my not just my steps, but also uh, we're mates. Uh, you know, online mates. We've never met, but we've we've been mates online for a good couple of years. Mm -hmm. And he helps me out with art direction as well as uh, separating. And I do some, I'm doing some stuff for Vice Press, his licensing company. Mm -hmm. We've got some prints coming out with them too. And uh, yeah, he very kindly said, I'll help you 
with this uh, separations because I thought there's no way it can be separated. Uh, yeah. Because uh, I don't know if I said, but like in the Photoshop file, there's 10 billion layers and 6 million colors. And mm -hmm. I thought there's no way, but he just looks at anything and he goes, yeah, no problem. It's easy. And bang, <laughs> he does it. Yeah, that's crazy. He's a, he's a magician. Maybe, maybe I should do like an extra special episode just on how to separate stuff. <laughs> and then... on, listen, do an extra special edition on Matt Ferguson. I, I am. I, I asked him a couple times already, but he's like super busy. Since he has to do separations for other people, then he has to do stuff for his own work. So he's like yeah. super busy. But by the... I should, I should um, uh, add a disclaimer that... Uh, this is not in order to advertise his services. He he merely helps me out uh, <laughs> on an occasional basis. I don't think he thanked me for sending everyone his way through their steps. Yeah, yeah. Um, but yeah, he's like, uh, uh, speaking of him, he actually, since we are recording on a Tuesday today and um, there's probably going to be the Star Wars uh, 40th uh, um, uh, anniversary edition. Pre-sale, mm -hmm. I heard today. It's going to happen today. Post poster of the decade, I think. It's, it's, it's crazy good, right? Oh, my God. I, I, I'm, I'm excited. I hope uh, th I'm, I heard that they're going to do a timed edition of the of the uh, first one of the regular one. So it's, that, that's going to be pretty good. But some variants with the Japanese lettering also looking very, very fine. Yeah, it's awesome. All righty. Um, since we already talked about like the the, the printing process and uh, the the APs that you're probably gonna get soon, um, my last thing I wanted to talk about is uh, like a short movie review. So, what what did you like about the original one? What did you like about the the um, the first one? And how excited are you for the new one that's coming out? Very very excited. Uh, so. Um... The movie uh, was, was my intro to Dune and uh, my dad and brothers would be big movie buffs and so we grew up and my dad would have loved sci-fi and all that kind of stuff, he still does. Mm -hmm. And so uh, a kind of a family favorite growing up was this movie Dune and I know some people don't like it but we absolutely adored it and mm -hmm. we could quote every line from it and we would quote lines at each other constantly and we still do. And uh, that was my first intro to it, and we'd watch it once a year, probably. Uh, and then when I was about, oh yeah, no, sir, that's changing the subject from movies to books. But then I read the book, and uh, <laughs> it's fine. Totally it's fine. We can include that. <laughs> All right, it was totally hooked. But uh, so I absolutely adored the movie. Um, I guess if I look at it objectively, I can see that it's flawed. Uh, you know. Uh, if I take away any sentiment to have about it being a childhood favorite, mm -hmm. it's not a perfect film. Uh, Lynch even would say uh, he hates it and he, he disowns it. Mm -hmm. um, it's not, a, you know, a perfect um, and by any stretch rendition of the book. Mm -hmm. But, you know, it's just it was my first intro to Blue Eyes and uh, Giant Sandworms and all that kind of stuff. And uh I like the sound guns, voice guns and mm. stuff like that. I think it's cool. Uh, so, yeah, love the film. And it couldn't be in better hands now, I don't think, the new one. Yeah. Um, I think he hit the job he did. Blade Runner is another favorite, would be a top three. Mm. I would watch that religiously and constantly over yeah. and over. And uh, um, Villeneuve did like a perfect, I thought, perfect um, sequel with 2049. He just nailed it mm -hmm. for me. So uh, I do think it's it's in great hands and it's going to be awesome. Things that worry me are, I think an all-star cast is a bit weird. And, yeah, uh, okay. It can kind of be distracting when every single role is filled with uh, a superstar. Mm -hmm. And the picks, uh, costume picks and stuff we're seeing, maybe to me look a little bit boring, but I will okay. totally reserve judgment until I see it. I mean, it's a Denny Villeneuve film. Yeah, it's going to be. Yeah, it's yeah, yeah. Be. exactly. I mean, he's a, he's a master in, in uh, cinematography and filmmaking. So that's uh, really, really cool stuff. And yeah. uh, but one thing, though, uh, the Oscar Isaac screenshot where he looks like 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 behind this way. You, you know what I'm talking about? Um, I think so. There, now, there's um, uh, Atreides Dune armor stuff, which I thought was cool. Is that what you mean? Yeah, I think, wearing... yeah, exactly. Where he just wearing this armor, and this like his correct his character and the armor basically looks like um, one of the characters from uh, the the video game Star Wars: The Old Republic. 
It was like an oh, expansion, man. and it basically looks so so similar. I was like, oh my god, they actually copied this. I'm gonna show you off air uh, this whole thing, but people can can Google this. I think it's Vel Velcuron is, is the, the 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 king, something like with Vel. But um, yeah, I'll, I'll put it in the show notes <laughs> for the rest of the people. <laughs> but yeah, um, so this is it. Thank you for stopping by, Matt. Uh, this was short and sweet, and you explained the whole process of making this wonderful piece of art. And uh, I think the people will enjoy it, and they did enjoy it. I mean, it was sold out real quick. So, um, yeah, uh, good thing to that. And uh, check out Mac uh, Facebook page. Uh, I almost said a uh, Facebook group. And also the Instagram page, which is Matt Griffin Illustrator. What? Matt Griffin Illustrator on Instagram. Uh, the Facebook group is there too, and collectors more than welcome. Art of Matt Griffin, it's called. And uh, AP links go up in the group first. So Exactly. So get in there, exactly. Check it out. Uh, if you really enjoyed this print and you want to be part of this hobby and collect, this is a good way to start. Okay, thank you guys. Okay. All right. Okay, so it is now the time for Victoria Casanova. She did this beautiful The Five Bloods piece and welcome Victoria, how are you? I'm good, how are you? I'm doing good as well. It's, it's also hot here. How, how, how hot is it in LA right now? It is cloudy right now. Okay. I haven't even stepped outside yet. I need to walk my dog soon, but it, cloudy which means it might still be warm. okay yeah yeah i yeah. remember i remember uh those mornings when uh in LA, in, in in california uh, when i basically woke up it was like you still had to wear a sweater because it was cold and then like basically yeah. two three hours later it was like super hot scorching hot yeah it's really weird yeah <laughs> <laughs> okay um I wanted to talk to you about, as I just said, about your uh, five, the five bloods piece, and it's a really, really cool one. And um, how how did this happen? How did the contact happen? How did Spike get involved? Um, so this is all through Gravelous Inc., which is a brand design agency. They're black owned. They're incredible. Um, Kenny and Deanna are the ones who created it and run it. Um, Kenny brought me on um, and told me that like where they're doing the um, artwork for the new Spike Lee joint and they needed new ideas um, because the first batch that they were getting just wasn't hitting. Mm -hmm. So he gave me like a PDF that had like, you know, the little inspiration, which consisted of Emory Douglas's piece and some other like 70s Vietnam um, kind of propaganda-ish, not actually not propaganda, like they were very like vintage retro inspiration style pictures. So he sent me like 10 of mm -hmm. them. Um, the whole thing, the whole encompassing um, purpose of it was that Spike wanted it to embody the black experience in Vietnam, but he wanted it to be very simple. So my style personally is very detailed. I'm like very busy. Like I love to like do um, like a lot of texture and, and different stuff like that. So this was actually a really big challenge for me to think, okay, how can I make something so significant being the black experience of Vietnam condensed into something very, very simple that's going to send the message of the character's experience mm -hmm. in the movie will send mm -hmm. actual history into something that was like very um, visually simplified. Um, so yeah. Was there a way that you, did, did you see the movie beforehand or some, some materials so you could draw from that or uh, was it just basically? Yeah. Yeah, I well, I they sent me the trailer. Um, I didn't get to see the film before it was released, but they sent me the trailer. Mm -hmm. um, I watched it in like I think February, but they um, what I did do, I did a lot of research um, on African Americans during the Vietnam mm -hmm. War. Like they were, you know, fighting a war for America who was not even giving yeah, them exactly. rights. Right. So like that is also a big thing throughout the movie. So I was thinking like, how do I embody that feeling through this illustration? So I just most, most of my inspiration really came a lot from just like my research um, on an emotional level, mm -hmm. too. I, I'm, I, when I when I look at all this stuff um, um, at, the, at the Douglas stuff and at, at your poster, it reminds me a little bit of um, Cause like we have like obviously since uh, I, I I grew up in East Germany and um, uh, so socialism was a big thing and uh, communism and stuff like that and I remember because we have a lot of uh, art here uh, that has those communist uh, propaganda yeah we could say propaganda maybe but those pieces that like promote 
how social how great socialism is and stuff like that and um the style kind of right. reminds me of this kind of um representation in a way and it's like really interesting uh, to to look at this way um yeah how, how was your uh, process in, in in making it what, what was your first steps uh, did you did you sketch things out or um Yes, I, I actually had a really weird process. I started out with like five ideas that I never even sent to Kenny yeah. um, or anyone to see, but it started out with like, I knew I wanted it to be a portrait of um, a soldier. We were, I was first thinking, okay, maybe it should be a portrait of Chadwick who plays- um, Storm and Norman. Who plays- Storm, Storm Yeah, I'm like getting the names all mixed up. We were, I was thinking of doing his portrait, but then I was thinking, okay, maybe this needs to be more like simplified and, and just like a, almost like a symbol of all of their experience. Mm. So I first drew this portrait of a, of a black male that I create that I just made, I made his face up and everything. And then it slowly just formed into, um, the, the inspiration that I got from, from Carrie James Marshall's, um, a portrait of the artist as a shadow of his former mm. self. That became a really big inspiration mm -hmm. for me because it was the meaning behind it. At least what I meant for me translated that through what I was trying to say for this. So it was a, a process over like, I think three or four days that I created mm -hmm. it. Um, and at first we had, in the first version, I had like a gun behind mm -hmm. him. But then he was like, Spike does not like guns in his posters, even though the movie has like, a, there's a lot of guns yeah, yeah. in the movie. Um, he doesn't like guns in his his posters. So we took the gun out. I had like a bullet strap um, around him at first as well. I think I did, yeah. And then we took that out. We just sim like simplified all of it. And the whole vision of it was that like his face is completely in shadow to kind of symbolize like that he like his identity isn't even acknowledged really. It's like they're not considered like a full human with full rights, yeah. but yet their eyes can see. It's like. The injustice and in yeah, it's in a, sh in a shadow yeah. basically also in, in terms of not being seen in in this way and uh, not being like yeah. physically real in a kind of way so that's that's a very interesting right. perspective yeah. um yeah uh, how 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 long was it from like from having the idea until the finished product i think it was about like four days to like oh actually we had like a week i think of like doing a couple revisions yeah. um and i also did another version i also did a completely different version that wasn't used in it um but that first one ended up ended up going so yeah it took like it took me three or four days to actually create it and then within the week we did revisions these go like very yeah, fast okay. like the yeah most of them they give you like two days to create something or create like a quick sketch concept. Okay, that's cool. So, yeah. Because I, I I know from like the movie poster world, they sometimes, like for example, like uh, last year I was uh, working with an artist on um, on a Star Wars series, like three posters for Star Wars, and Disney took so long to get back to us. This was incredible. It's like I don't know, but in the end we didn't make it because it just was took too long. What Disney didn't get no. to it, but. Well, it's it's gonna be in there, and maybe it's someday Disney is gonna decide. Oh yeah, let's do some prints, or here you get the license to do some prints. It's like, it's a it's a yeah. it's a crazy thing, definitely. And um, Spike had your artwork in uh, in in his shop. You could basically buy it, and uh, as a I think it was a screen print also. And um, did you ever do like screen prints before in in this kind of way or? No, I think I think Gravelous took care of that. They have like printers okay. in their office. They have like really, really beautiful, cool mm -hmm. office on Wilshire. Um, yeah, they. I think they printed all of that, so I didn't see the process of that okay. part. But yeah. But uh, and did uh, did you get did you get a print yet, or do you have a print for yourself? No, I haven't. Oh, I should, yeah, you should, I should get yeah, exactly. One. You should get one. <laughs> you should demand that. <laughs> I know. I didn't think about that. <laughs> but yeah, um, yeah. Try try to get one. Maybe they, there's going to be some time. I there was there since there was like so much stuff coming out this week. Like with the Star Wars uh, one, uh, Matt Ferguson Star Wars piece we talked about. Uh, I didn't have the money to buy one of your prints, but I really wanted to. And um, 
Yeah, I think they were about four hundred dollars on sale on 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 on, on Spike's site, but yeah, it's a it's a, it's okay price. Oh wow, I didn't know that. Yep. <laughs> and th th that would have been my next question because uh, like when you do like a mov movie poster in, in this kind of world uh, where I come from um, there's always like an artist proof it's called and the artist gets a couple of prints to sell them for themselves from their store And but I guess this is not going to happen is it I didn't get that no I didn't. maybe n now, I didn't now you have the terms maybe you should like <laughs> ask for that I don't know, maybe I should ask a couple questions, I don't know, but no, I'm just, I'm just, happy. I'm grateful to like be a part of mm -hmm. this and I'm just grateful to, you know, provide my artistic vision for something much bigger than myself. Of course, so. yeah, it's, it's, and it's a, yeah, it's, it's a great movie as well. And that's the next thing I want to talk about is, um, you watched the movie? Uh, I watched the movie and I, I just came out with the review yesterday with my colleague and we did it in German but uh, so I, I promised some some because like some people ask me already hey d did you do the, the the five bloods review in English I I really wondered and I said no it's in German he was like oh no too bad but it, and I told him yeah yeah he's, he's also a movie a poster collector and I told him yeah check it out I'm gonna talk to Victoria Casinova tomorrow uh, and um, that's going to be on Friday. It's going to come out, and then uh, you will see the, like a short movie review of the film. So, uh, first off, what did you really like about the movie? I love how. I mean, there's a lot of things I like about it, but I love how like in your face it is, while also like I think portraying a really significant message. Mm -hmm. Like it's like very unapologetic. Yeah, it is. Um, yeah, I mean, it touches on, like, racism to imperialism to men's friendships, post-traumatic stress with Paul having, like, severe PTSD. Exactly. Um, and it's, like, I don't know. I, I like how it is. It was kind of, like, one whose trauma, it's, it's, like, their trauma isn't limited to Vietnam, but it extends, like, the racism extends on the domestic front that they were experiencing. So it touches on so many different levels. And I feel like the men were a bridge between the past and present. Mm -hmm. And it was, so, I mean, the release of it is so timely. Exactly. Um, yeah. Um, I, I, I also I, um, enjoyed the way that he didn't do like a de-aging or something like that with the, with the flashbacks. And this shows also how, how, the war is still even it was in in, in the 60s early 70s it still is uh, an important part for them and um their culture in in, in nowadays uh, america and that's like that's like really interesting to me and uh i really enjoyed that point but uh, i have i have to ask you how, how did you cope with the with the violence i i thought it was a really violent movie you know i it really caught me off guard when um when the first guy oh yeah yeah, I, I don't yeah know, it's a spoiler it's like spoiler, spoiler alert <laughs> spoiler alert like when he's like he's like do you really care about this money like you know he's oh, putting I, gold I, I so i so knew that was gonna come i was like oh my god <laughs> next step I next step <laughs> the whole time i'm like one of these guys is gonna step mm. on a mine like they had the french um yeah I don't know what they were called. Yeah. The yeah. um, LAMB or something, the, like uh, that. They the something like that. They were called the organization. Yeah, with like Hetty. I, I just, I knew something was going to happen, but I didn't know it was going to be like yeah. that. Like, that's so interesting about the film. It's like the beginning, you start out seeing these men. They're all from different, you know, they live their life and they come together. It's like a reunion. Yeah. You know, they're all going to go to Vietnam together and you just have no idea that it's going to result in like this entire like, other version of warfare yeah it, it was like basically um, from a like a fun adventure to a real horrible war movie and uh in, in terms of the violence yeah. and uh I, I thought by the way that uh, when when the when um is it uh, i don't i don't forget i forgot his character name but um when he was looking for the gold bars i thought that's when the landmines gonna struck uh, or gonna strike in, in some sort of oh, way David, yeah um, he was personally yeah i th I thought. Yeah, and the part when he was on the when he stepped on yeah. the mine and they all wrapped the rope yeah. around him and pulled like that was a moment. Yeah, that's what, that was very um, intense. A, yeah, and that's what's so interesting about it. It's like there's so many layers to it. We're touching on racism. We're touching on PTSD. Mm -hmm. We're touching on like a, a an estranged relationship between father and son. Um, I don't know. There's a lot. Yeah. There's a lot to it. Yeah. 
That's like yeah. a Spike. Spike does always this movies like that. They always cover um, so much, so, so many different messages, so, so many different uh, aspects of, uh, of African American culture and uh, also um, culture in general. And it's like uh, really cool how he ties it all together. But but I still that that's one of the points I didn't like about the movie is uh, the the violence. It was I think it was not necessary to do that way, and especially when we look at I I know. Or, I don't know, maybe some people have to see it, but um, spoiler in this case again, the, the one scene where the kid or the, the, the guy gets shot right away and it's like, I don't know, it was super graphic. It was like rated rated R movie in my opinion. No, 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 oh, yeah, no, no. I mean the, 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 the Vietnam flashback scene, like like actual footage where, where um, the, this one guy gets shot, remember? Yeah. No, I'm, there's a, I mean, there's also like a, a flashback of like a baby yeah. that had like part of yeah, it. Yeah, that's. I... But you know what? Yeah, it's not. It's not the most pleasant visuals, but it's. Nece I felt like it was like this is what happened. This is okay. the trauma that okay. African Americans have had to face. This is the trauma that soldiers in Vietnam have faced. Like, it's not pleasant. It's not pretty. It's not cute. It's not sexy. Okay, cool. But it's okay. real. I, that's my opinion. of course I yeah that's it's, I, it's I I just wondered because it's you know I, I can only like I come from a white privileged position obviously and not having th this kind of experience so uh, <laughs> I I can't tell and it's like it was hard because like my my colleague she is um, she also like she's like really against violence and stuff and she was wondering about that uh, about that and I'm I'm really glad that I have like a female uh, um, a black perspective on that and that's like really good to good to hear that uh, that it actually is something that is important to the movie and um, and is, is there something you didn't like <sighs> what did i not like about it i don't know if there's anything i particularly didn't like i think that what it, i was felt sad a lot of parts i felt sad for paul's um circumstance mm -hmm. just the unfortunateness of of that and how the things that he had to experience, like he kind of got the, I, he soaked in, I think the worst of the experience of Vietnam than the mm -hmm. other guys did. Um, he kind of had this mentality of like, I, like I need to get mine. Like when am I going to get mine? Um, kind of thing. And that made me sad. because I know that there's a lot of, that's the feeling that a lot of Americans, African Americans hold as well. Um, yeah. Okay. And, uh, okay. I don't know. I think, yeah, I just made, just made me like, like feeling sad that that happened, that all that trauma happened that, and it's still happening today. Mm -hmm. It's like, mm -hmm. yeah, that's one of the parts. It's like, you know, uh, being a teacher, I actually taught today again, I taught uh, black ish today uh, in, 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 in my class because um, since there's not much going on, it's like next week, there's going to, they're going to get their diplomas and everything. And like school's basically over summer, summer break is incoming. So, um, yeah, I, 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 we, I, I actually showed him a couple of black-ish episodes and we talked about it and like what it means uh, in, in a certain way. So I, I always try like, to educate the, the students and we had a big demonstration as well, uh, the Black Lives Matter uh, um, demonstration here in Berlin. Like I think at the like 15, 20,000 people showed up. So that was really cool to see. And um, yeah, a, a couple of my students even went there, and they they had uh, they had signs up, and 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 some of them even like even on Instagram, like uh, there was like this. Um, I have uh, I have a, a black female student, and she actually wrote, "Hey, thank thank you, Mr. Luther, for uh, doing this and like teaching me how to talk about this topic." And I was like really touched by that, and I'm I'm, I'm glad that I could give something back for uh, like for the community and for. Um, for my students so to, to educate them to understand what is happening in the world and what what is like wrong with that so that's that's also a really really good thing and i wanted to do use the five bloods as well but i think it's too violent i can't use it in the classroom i mean how old are the kids it, it depends i have <laughs> like from uh 12 year olds up to 19 year olds so it's like there's there's a lot in the mix. The older ones could do it, but I had younger ones today, so it was it wasn't in the cards. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I don't know. I guess they'd have to find it. Maybe it'll find its way to them. Yeah. 
sometimes. I mean, there's other stuff that that <laughs> helps uh, also to explain the situation, and I think Blackish does a good job uh, on explaining certain with certain epi episodes to make it more clear what what is going on, and um, yeah, and they they understand that. And they really like that, and they actually watch more stuff, and uh, that's that's a really a good thing that, that that they pick up, and that they have maybe this kind of outlet because they know I do uh, like all those talks and interviews and movie reviews and stuff like that. So they actually watch it because they know me, and so I kind of have like still this uh, teaching thing going on, even if I do this. Uh, so they they check that out. That's a that's a good thing. Okay. Um, Let's come to the rating part. We always rate a movie here, and uh, we rate from zero to ten. What would you give the Five Bloods? Oh man! <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I would say I would say ten, just because like, right. the, uh, the it's in the middle of Hollywood right now, and being like seeing everything that's happening mm -hmm. with America and mm -hmm. protests, and everything. I think it's so timely. It's jarring. It's crazy it's it, c it catches you by surprise but i think it's so significant and important for the times mm -hmm. right now as well as you know educating us further on not only our current history but our past history from the 70s of vietnam yeah. i think yeah i think it's i, lo I loved it great great Honestly. yeah i, I like to read too i think it's one of the best movies of the year and uh, i think also that um the movie doesn't glorify what happened in Vietnam. I think like, for example, if you have um, Forrest Gump, for example, who's like basically not glorifying, but showing a totally different Vietnam experience. And I think uh, Spike Lee informs and entertains at the same time. And he does it very well. And he does it, I think he, he's maybe the best uh, um, educator, entertainer uh, persona in the film business. And I'm really uh, glad that uh, he made this movie. I gave the movie eight of eight of ten yeah. because of the violence and some of the plot points. Like from a cinematic perspective, I uh, uh, sometimes the story was a little bit thin, but uh, all all fair, I'd say. And um, yeah, still a good movie. I would recommend it. One of the best movies I've seen all year. And um, thank you, Victoria, for uh, stopping by. It was really a pleasure talking to you and having your perspective on the piece and on the movie. And uh, we will see each other soon. I guess uh, next week when we have an interview, but I don't know which one is who's going to be on uh, because I there's a, there's a ton of schedule. I had a bunch of interviews this week. So, <laughs> okay, guys, take care. Bye bye.